Welcome to Revival Time Hub, the fire shall ever be burning upon the altar, it shall never go out. Holy Spirit, we thank you, because you are the author of scripture, you represent the wisdom of Jesus in our lives, and we have come tonight demonstrating our commitment to learn, to grow, to be empowered. We pray that tonight there be the hearing of faith and even the walking of miracles. May your word come with power. Our hearts are opened in Jesus name. God bless you. Please be seated. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's good to be in church. It's good to be in the house of God. Hallelujah. Very quickly, I just want to celebrate a wonderful man of God in our midst, Pastor Bology Sunday. He's a resident pastor of Living Faith Goshen. God bless you. Bless you. God bless you, sir. Thank you. Thank you for coming in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I thought to start tonight by saying a very big thank you to everyone. Um, not just the workers, but everyone who has committed himself and herself to this vision so far. God has shown us mercy. And I really want to say thank you to our online family, world over. Um, Azaria family, our family here in Abuja. The Lord honor you in the name of Jesus. Having said that, let me again reiterate the need that we continue to be very serious with Jesus. The need to focus on Jesus. It was, it, it burned very strong in my heart as I prepared for tonight to just encourage believers, not just for Koinonia, but generally speaking. Um, I think sometimes, now this is my opinion, uh, sometimes I think um we lose we lose the seriousness that it takes sometimes to receive from god it's good to be happy it's good to celebrate but sometimes i think if we are not guided not here in koinonia i'm speaking generally believers have the tendency to go overboard and at the end of it not receive anything in the end of the service and this is why people continue to learn the bible says ever learning but never coming to the knowledge. I can tell you this, there is a level of attitude and seriousness and diligence that must be given when you want to receive. The Bible says that Peter told the man at Gate Beautiful, look on us. And the Bible says he looked steadfastly expecting to receive. Hallelujah. So I just thought to really encourage us that every time you come to the house of God, you must be intentional about your desire to receive, about your desire for an encounter. The house of God is where God makes men. The church is a place of encounters. The church is a place of transformation. The church is a place of the miraculous. The church is a place where we encounter the anointing it is a place for fellowship where Jesus himself, according to Paul's teaching, that Jesus is in that Zion, the firstborn of we the begotten, in a company, an innumerable company of angels. Praise the name of the Lord. Jesus was also speaking and he gave a parable and it had to do with the word. And he said every time the word is sown, satan is also in that vicinity and he has an assignment to take the word and the bible says the ones who did not bear fruit are the ones who heard and did not understand the ones who bore fruits are the ones who heard and they understood and even among those who understood they produced three levels of results some 30 fold some 60 fold and some a hundred fold so it's my charge to us up front tonight that we remain intentional about building ourselves the word of god is his instrument for building 
and you cannot imagine how blessed i was just hearing the testimonies um thank god for miracles thank god for breakthroughs financial blessings but i am telling you second only to salvation the greatest miracle that can happen to an individual is the miracle of transformation transformation means you change states from one level to the other hallelujah praise the name of the lord so we have come to the house of god this is bethel the place of bread we have come to learn you see the word of god is very powerful and it is very valuable because this kingdom is knowledge dependent god bless our precious worship team for that powerful song and all their renditions a call that your eyes be open it is a very very powerful prayer when an individual is blinded there is almost no future for that individual hallelujah darkness is terrible john 1 5 says and the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not the greatest help remember our teaching here let's do a quick recap that the greatest need of a non-believer is salvation the greatest need of a believer is transformation the greatest need of a transformed believer is empowerment and the greatest need of an empowered believer is character and humility so up front you know how to help people if you see an unbeliever no matter what else you give that unbeliever if salvation is not part of it you did not help that unbeliever if you see a believer no matter what you give that believer if you do not give the believer the keys that make for transformation through renewal and enlightenment you have not really helped that believer and if you meet a believer who is already transformed then he must be exposed to the spiritual atmosphere that makes for empowerment because this kingdom also requires power it is according as his divine power hath given us all things the bible says that pertains unto life and godliness and when you find a believer that is saved transformed and empowered your prayer and your pleas that the person gets to a point where they become people of humility and character are we blessed never forget again that i told you the church is where believers are methodically groomed is first and foremost a place where people encounter jesus the son of the living god there is no other name the bible declares under heaven given unto men by which we must be saved no gimmick no philosophy sustains the power to save a man hallelujah it is faith in jesus christ and it depends on what you believe about jesus this is not my message tonight not everything about jesus saves you i hope you know there are things you believe about jesus that does not equal salvation for instance believing jesus was a good man does not bring salvation believing jesus was the carpenter's son does not bring salvation believing jesus was born of a virgin is you are right but that is not what is connected to salvation there is there is an information about jesus that is related to salvation you must believe that he came as a reflection of the love of the father you must believe in his substitutionary sacrifice are we together now yes you must believe in him as savior as lord and as king that he was raised up for our justification this is the condition for salvation there are many people who believe in Jesus. There are many religions that believe in Jesus. Out of the 4,000 religions on earth or thereabout, there are at least more than half of them who have the idea of Jesus in their teachings. But that does not make them say. Just believing and agreeing that there is a Jesus does not bring you salvation. You must believe that he is Savior, he is Lord and King hallelujah number two the bible is the only authorized listen carefully the bible 
in partnership with the Holy Spirit is the only authorized platform for discipleship for transformation no other material has the holistic capacity to transform a believer you have to understand this there are all kinds of books that capture in them expressions that are consistent with the Christian faith and may minister some semblance of transformation but any transformation that will turn the believer to be Christ-like must be referenced from Scripture you have to understand this this is doctrine this is how believers become matured I is my prayer that God would take away shadow boxing and immaturity from the body of Christ we must be very methodical with our spiritual growth believers should get to a point where they understand the truths of Scripture not as an opinion left to the idea of a man of God or a church these things must be truth that are founded upon Scripture the gift and the blessing of having a Bible is to be able to help us the things that are written aforetime the Bible declares that they are for our learning so that we through the comfort of Scripture might find hope I commend you to God he says and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified you focus on any extra biblical material it may attempt to minister some level of information that makes for transformation but only the Bible has that holistic capacity based on the information written it is true that all we have here was not all that was written by the apostles that is true Bible history already told us that but the Bible says many miracles did Jesus in the presence of his disciples which were not recorded in this book so it's no news even the Bible acknowledges that there are other expressions that were not captured here but he tells us this is sufficient to make you anything God says there is nothing you seek as far as life and godliness is concerned that scripture does not sustain the intelligence to give you are you learning now I will never stop saying this till you get it until Jesus comes praise the name of the Lord because you see repetition creates persuasion when you continue to repeat again and again then these things become the truths that are most surely believed among us maybe let me say one more thing again that every time you open the Bible please listen and learn now the Word of God has come every time you open scripture there are three things that you are looking out for number one you are looking for promises please say after me promises every time you open scripture what you are searching for are promises promises represent the boundary of God's commitment to the believer as far as your earth work is concerned God is almighty but the system of administering his love and his power is with respect to the provisions that scripture has allowed God cannot bless a man outside of the allowance that scripture gives listen this is very powerful because this is where if you do not understand this eventually you will get into superstition God can do many things all things but the operation of Jesus Christ as revealed from Scripture is based on the truths of Scripture that means if you want to know how far God can go over your life find what he has said here God is only committed to what he has said not what you want God is not committed to what you want he's only committed to what you want if what you want is consistent with what he has said if your needs have no provision here in Scripture then it will not come to pass are we blessed now herein lies our confidence as matured believers it is not longevity in church that makes for maturity is the awareness that God does not lie he is a God of integrity he's also a God of ability are we together and that on the strength of the immutability of his counsel if we can find what he said then we can commit him please give us Genesis 21 from verse 1 and 2 Genesis 21 from verse 1 and 2 God only does what he said and the Lord visited Sarah please read with me one to read and the Lord visited Sarah as he had said 
and the Lord did unto Sarah not as Sarah wanted the Lord did not do to Sarah as she wanted he did to Sarah as she said verse 2 same scripture for Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age at the set time which God had spoken listen carefully this is already a deliverance for someone that means every time you write a prayer request don't you think that because you prayed on it it will be answered the first requirement is that you must connect every request to the scripture that gives you a guarantee that God is this is why scriptureless prayer is useless prayer it's just a dissipation of energy except if you are praying in tongues when you are praying a wordless a prayer that is not word based there is no scriptural platform for God to be committed listen to me God is touched with the feelings of our infirmity but he's moved by his word just because he has compassion towards you does not mean things will be solved he himself has chosen to submit to his word that he exalts his word above his name if someone learning this is sound doctrine this is how believers become matured all these superstitious things sometimes flying around is why a lot of people are puffed up with knowledge that does not produce predictable spiritual results there is nothing you can do against the truth but for the truth are we learning? So the Bible contains promises. What has God said concerning me? God has spoken so many things concerning us. What has he said? It is your assignment to walk in partnership with the Holy Spirit to find it. They are life to those who find them. They are life to those who find them. And those who find receive finding as a harvest for seeking because the Bible says the law is that everyone that seeketh find it finding is not for men of God finding is not for those in ministry finding is for seekers if you seek you will find I want to rise in life and destiny oh God I know I can't be a failure what is your basis bring forth your strong reasons what is your basis I'm tired of suffering no no that's not the basis for victory what has the Bible said the Bible says the path of the just for instance is as a shining light are you learning now that shines ever brighter onto the perfect day that becomes your scripture of defense father on the basis of this truth and on the basis of your integrity I place a demand for the performance of this scripture in my life now you that is how to pray the kind of prayer that produces result blind scriptures lamentation will only the Holy Ghost will just come to comfort you because he's a comforter but as far as results listen listen as far as results are concerned believe me if you do not know how to engage scripture you may live a frustrated christian life are we together so you find in scripture promises number two what do you find every time you open scripture principles principles the second thing you find in scripture are principles the modus operandi of the kingdom this is how the kingdom operates Christianity operates based on a kingdom system and every kingdom has rules of engagement there is a way God behaves there is a way for instance in Nigeria as a federation and in many many nations across the world there is a way that you want if you want to approach the president or anyone in the presidency there is a protocol is that true if different states want to receive their subvention there is a system a modus operandi so if you become a governor or a commissioner of finance or whatever it is you are enlightened and educated that as far as this territory is concerned this is how you obtain the things that you need to obtain failure to know it you may have a territory that has the resources but it may not reach you everybody say principles 
principles are called the secrets of the kingdom or the mysteries of the kingdom Matthew 13 and verse 11 the Bible says Jesus was speaking and here's what he said because it is given unto you to know to know the word know there is not just the word awareness it's not mere awareness it's a level of intimacy is the same word that is used as a husband knowing his wife to know to so interact that you become one with the mysteries of the kingdom what is a mystery a mystery is a hidden body of truth that is privy to a group of people the military for instance they operate by mysteries they have how they talk there is something that the military can say that if you are a civilian and you are not trained you may not understand what they are saying you would have to be trained in the military for that conversation to be fruitful to you so in this kingdom the bible exposes us to the mysteries of the kingdom i pray and i beseech you by the message of god that you pay attention and take serious what i'm sharing with you these are the weapons of victory we have been given in this kingdom there is no other way we command results outside of this it is not one of the ways it is the way the mysteries of the kingdom so when i open my bible hidden in stories hidden in parables hidden in riddles hidden in the psalms the five books of moses all of them reveal jesus the way there is something in the pentateuch that reveals the character of jesus and the modus operandi of the kingdom are we together when you go to the prophets major and minor there are things you find the poetic books there are revelations of jesus that you find scattered across psalms is a, a spiritual protocols for accessing different dimensions of results proverbs comes to reveal the wisdom of the kingdom as far as living and excelling is concerned you now go to the gospels where jesus himself came as the manifestation of god i've told you why jesus came to the earth jesus came to the earth not just to save us his number one assignment when he came to the earth was as a correction of our idea about god the god that people did not know because until then they had not seen him manifest bodily so there were many ideas that the prophets they depended on the interpretation of the prophets to know god they couldn't have a personal relationship because the holy spirit was not given to all it was prophet joel that said one day this formula for knowledge will be obsolete because the holy spirit will be poured upon all flesh and at that time he will give the fivefold to mature the saints but as far as personal relationship is concerned that veil will be torn are we together now are you learning yes so when jesus came he came primarily as a correction of our idea he came as a marking script so that we now compare everything the prophets told us about him with the manifestation of jesus and look you now see why the father had to approve him before he started because if the father did not approve him that meant that any other thing he did before the father spoke we can say is wrong from the time the father spoke till jesus went to heaven we know that everything he did was correct because the father spoke already that i am pleased with him so when we see the father say i have loved you with an everlasting love i have drawn you with my kindness we have a right to not believe the father until we verify that statement in the life of jesus did jesus demonstrate the love of the father search the scripture so you find out that he showed compassion by feeding people physically he showed compassion by feeding people spiritually when he met a prostitute at the well he did not throw her inside the well is that true he sat down and had a conversation with her when he met publicans and sinners how did he behave so we can now verify that god is love because jesus manifested it once have i spoken twice have you heard that all power belongs to god we have a right to say god you are a liar until we verify in the life of jesus 
did we see the power of God demonstrated in the life of Jesus read your Bible the testament is there for your vetting we see all kinds of signs and wonders we sing songs what manner of man is Jesus he parted the sea he did all sorts of things so by the manifestation of the life of Jesus we can safely conclude that God is all-powerful because we do not see any impossibility that happened to Jesus except the time when he could not do any miracle and the Bible took responsibility to tell us why if the Bible left us in darkness we say God there is something you cannot do but the Bible tells us that the reason why Jesus could not do this is because of their unbelief that he himself marveled at their unbelief And the Bible, Paul himself was buttressing on that and said there still remain a rest for the people of God. Even though they are the people of God, they have not entered their Sabbath. What was the limitation? That they heard the word just like we did, but the word did not profit them. Why? Not mixed with faith. What is faith? Your conviction and the corresponding action you take to honor that conviction. They did not act on what they heard. Faith is the name given to the action you take based on on your conviction on who God is and the integrity of his person the name given to the action not just the believing they could not enter his rest and he encourages us he says today if you hear his voice do not harden your heart like they did in the wilderness he says there remained a rest a Sabbath for the people of God are you still in church so when you open the Bible can I tell you this this is the reason why believers who do not study the Bible, believers who do not listen to teachings, believers who do not engage in the ministry of the word will not only be the first to be deceived, they will be the first to be destroyed. Because there is no basis for your security. Man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Is God already speaking to someone? Believe me, if I stop here tonight, I am still satisfied. Promises, principles. Why do we fail in life? Largely because of Psalm 82 and verse 5. They know not neither will they understand the limitation is not God's ability the limitation is knowledge they know not neither will they understand they walk on in you now see why the worship team was shouting it as our faces that there must be light tonight and I agree with them there must be light over your destiny in the name of Jesus listen believers listen get tired of ignorance Get tired of shadow boxing. You must be able to know with exactitude the spiritual principles that are connected to the outcomes you desire. This is what mastery is about in the kingdom. And the Bible says, He that strives for mastery is not crowned except he strives lawfully. Nobody wins the Olympic by mistake. Everybody who gets to that final round of the Olympic was a champion in his own nation. Yet someone still takes last in that race. That means the person was a champion but not champion enough at a global scale. So don't just say you are better than someone because you have two unserious Christians around and you are the one teaching them. By what reference do you think you are serious? They comparing themselves with themselves, the Bible says, are not wise. You must raise a high spiritual bar. Can I tell you this? Those who win the 100 meters race are never trained with 100 meters. No. If you want to win 100 meters, you train. He won't stop till you look just like him. He won't stop. He won't stop till your life looks like him. He won't stop. He won't stop till my life looks like him. You may not like what I'm saying now, but brothers and sisters, when the word begins to make you, one day you will look at your life and you will need a telescope to look at your yesterday. The difference between yesterday and today, 
and you will stand among the overcomers i can tell you how men are made men are not made by giving useless information they are made by the word john 1 verse 3 and nothing without him was not anything made that was made so we have prophecy we have principles the third thing you find in scripture are prophecies the first promises second principles three p's the third prophecies prophecies give you an idea of the end we need to know what tomorrow looks like we need to know what the end looks like that is the cure for fear people only fear when it is unknown scripture has already told us the end of the story both for your destiny and for our time here so we can find comfort based on scripture as a child of god you know number one that you will finish well what is the basis of your confidence jeremiah 29 and verse 11 i know the thoughts that i think towards you say yet the lord God is speaking, your situation is speaking, you can choose who you believe. Say it the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. So it already prophetically tells you that God already knows that you have an expected end. And then at the end of time, we know how these things will be. I saw a new earth and a new heaven for the old earth and the, and the old heaven had gone away. And then he came together with us to tabernacle in that city. Christ himself being the light of that city. We know the end of time. So with all the confusion and all of these things, everything that is a breaking news is an old news based on scripture. The Bible already told us there will be wars and there will be rumors of wars, for instance. But the Bible also tells us, nay, in all these things, you are more and conquer so when we act confident in an uncertain world we look like fools except that our wisdom is superior because it comes from the authority of scripture there is prophecy that backs us it gives us hope and hope does not make a shame you see how it is so next time someone tells you I'm a matured Christian Tell him I, I will not argue with you. Number one, what is Christianity about? Who is Jesus? Why is he here? Anybody who cannot defend Jesus is not even born again. Not even to talk of maturity. Number two, what are the weapons of victory that have been given to the believer? What are they? How can I know that my tomorrow is great? It's a terrible thing to live in an uncertain world. Even at death, the Bible still tells us that we are victorious. It secures us all around. For me to live is Christ. And even in death, it simply becomes for me a door to a higher and a superior realm. So in any case, we find comfort. Is that true? Yes. So you don't fear death. Why? Because in the kingdom, we call death sleeping. And they that sleep, sleep at night. When you are sleeping in the afternoon, it's called siesta because you should wake up. So they that sleep, sleep at night. They use the day to walk. I must walk the walks of him that sent me while it is day. For the night cometh when no man can walk. Why? Because at that night you sleep. And there are two ways to sleep in the kingdom. Number one, you sleep in the mystery that we call death or Jesus Christ comes to meet you. In any case, you have slept. He told John, he said, no, 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 not everybody will taste of this death physically. But one thing for sure is those who have died and we who are alive, we will all be changed. But the protocol is that those who have died in Christ will be given that honor because they have tasted of this. So they will arise and we who are alive and remain, the Bible says, will be caught up with him. That's 1 Thessalonians 4 or 5. It says, comfort one another with this scripture. So all round, I'm just showing you the, the formidability of this faith life. Many spiritual practices do not have security above this realm. 
when you are gone they just say you have gone to all kinds of places but we know where we are going to is that true why will you not want to come to Jesus with this kind of provisions your destiny your future your eternity everything is secured in Christ this is why Satan fights the gospel please pay attention this is why Satan will do anything to make sure your loved ones are not saved this is why Satan will do anything to make sure that you do not rise this is why Satan will do anything to make sure you don't have the prosperity it takes for your comfort and for the gospel can I tell you this um, I, this is not to glorify Satan but you see you need to study how visionary Satan is there is nothing that he does that is for itself everything he does is connected to one big goal to stop the revelation of Jesus and the glorification of the same ask Satan why do you fight prosperity that's the same reason why do you fight the bodies of men same reason why should the woman not have a child satan does not have any business with the child his concern is that anything captured in your life please pay attention anything captured in your life becomes satan's business if he finds out that there is potential in it to reveal jesus and to glorify jesus let me repeat that means satan has no business with your job he has no business with your health he has no business with your children if he does not think there is something he need to bring glory to the name of the lord the moment satan finds out that there is something in your life that he suspects he doesn't have to wait for you to be born again he suspects that one day with this talent you have if you ever get born again he will not wait until you get born again he will begin to attack it satan is not motivated by many motivations there's something you can learn from him there is a singular motivation he's motivated by one agenda to stop the revelation of Jesus Christ and to stop the glorification of the same can I tell you this if God takes everything that can reveal him in us Satan will pass you like this and you will beg him to come and you'll say no he will go to look for where next that glory went to so he's not just looking for you because of you if you don't understand what I'm teaching you will not even understand tonight's teaching at all who have I offended that my life is like that you will stop that kind of statement after a revelation like this you see that now because listen listen I'm not saying those who say that are bad but that's why you came to church the church is a place of enlightenment the condition for an attack is that there when Satan finds out that you were created in the image and the likeness of God as a baby he pursued children you are an adult <laughs> Satan pursued children who could not beg they could not talk they could only suck breasts he said kill them don't wait until they grow every child was created in the image of God and I know that one day if that prophet and apostle and everybody arises we're in trouble and now you have become an adult you can use your will in partnership with the Holy Ghost it will not let you go easily ah but thanks be to God but thanks be to God which causes us always to triumph there will be no need for all the arsenals that are given to the believer to make for victory experientially if there was no adversary who is determined to destroy us the bible says john chapter 10 and verse 10 it says the thief cometh not but for to steal to kill john 10 10 the thief cometh not but for do you know what this means my goodness do you know that i've not even started well we're in church god is speaking if this is all i say we'll close our bible and discuss it next week but i have to drum this thing because this is how to grow are you getting blessed the thief cometh not just let's let's deal with those first four words that means you have no business seeing the thief if there is nothing that is worth stealing 
nothing that is worth killing nothing that is worth destroying you get the idea now that means the thief is so selfish if you ever see him he comes to you as a verification that there is something in your life that is worth stealing killing and destroying every time you see satan come around you he has already confirmed to you that you are not ordinary this is what the bible is saying hear me that means if without engaging the weapons of victory you are free from satan it means something is wrong with you your freedom should not come from any negotiation with him your freedom should come by superimposing dominion that means if satan sees you without engaging the weapons of victory he should attack you that is proof that you were created in the image of god there are many people who are not facing any attack because they are cold they are lazy they are unserious they have checked you and found out that you don't have any relevance as far as kingdom comes concerned it's not because you are special you are not praying you are not fasting you don't know the lord you are not serious and yet you are not attacked don't be flattered the devil has found that he's focusing on those who can come and save you before he comes to you I was glad when they said unto me you see that church is a good place it truly is please sit down so the thief cometh not but for to steal please give it to us again to kill and to destroy Jesus contrasts it and says I am come that they may have and they may have it more look up there is a difference between life and abundant life oh what is getting me into this thing this night life and abundant life listen carefully by the way well since this is koinonia let me just caution you lovingly over some of these blind shouts that sometimes when the word of god is coming the energy it takes to receive is the same energy you are wasting in unnecessarily shouting there is it listen i won't say this anywhere this is this is home and god is training us are we together yes we must be thoroughly furnished sometimes i'm, I'm not i don't mean to insult you but but just listen to if if he's to laugh when he's laughable all of us know but some of these shout most times people who do these things are not getting it and say most times not all the time and please don't feel bad i'm not i'm not this is a family no one condemns anyone but it's just a it's just an honest honest word of caution hallelujah praise the name of the lord Am I seeing well? Is that Her Majesty? I'm so sorry. Please let's celebrate her. Her Majesty, the wife of the Olu of Wari. God bless you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. My sincere apologies. Yes. They are part of us. We are family. It's good to hear this kind of thing and turn any kingdom to faith, subdued kingdom. Praise the Lord. Are we together? God bless you, Ma. Thank you. Such an honor to have you around. Where was I? I was cautioning. I was cautioning and, and calling for diligence as the word of God. Listen, two people acted this way in Jesus' days. Mary and Martha. Is it in your Bible? Remember the things that are written at four times, they are for our learning. Martha was running around doing all kinds of things and she was not getting it. Mary sat quietly and was listening. Here's what Jesus said. Martha, Martha, you are worried and offended about so many things. But he says this one thing, one thing is needful. And this Mary has chosen to sit down at the master's feet. Now please look up. Because it is true that this kingdom operates by knowledge, number one. Because it is true that you were created in the image and the likeness of God number three because it is true that there is an adversary and the Bible is not silent about him 
God decided to invent a formula to ensure that believers remain victorious. And that formula is the word of God in partnership with the Holy Spirit, in partnership with gifts, men and women of God who he has sent. Are we together now? Yes. That when God grants you access to a spiritual family, God grants you access to spiritual voices, God grants you access to scripture, he grants you access to the Holy Spirit. He has supplied to you the weapons of victory. The men and the women of God interpret scripture. They instruct you according to Jeremiah 3.15 in knowledge and in wisdom. That is their assignment to feed you, to give you that spiritual nourishment. Are we together? So they give you understanding, they give you knowledge. The word of God opens you up the Holy Spirit comes to back you. Among the many things that the Holy Spirit does, He is the custodian and the administrator of the anointing. Everything that has to do with the anointing is in the office of the Holy Spirit. What is the assignment of the anointing? I have taught you here. The assignment of the anointing is to insist that the word of God does not look like a lie. So if there is no word that proceeds, the anointing has no ministry. The assignment of the anointing is to validate the claims of Jesus as revealed in scripture. So when the Bible says God heals, now the anointing comes to prove that that statement is true. If God says, I am able to lift men, you see why the anointing follows the word. This is the biblical strategy for administering the anointing. There must be a statement that you must put on ground first. Something the Bible says should be done. Then the anointing, you can beckon on the Holy Spirit now. Just dispensing the anointing without a scriptural basis, the devil will easily steal into that atmosphere and delve people into superstition and all kinds of extra biblical manifestations. And there are sincere and well-meaning people who are victims of this. Why? Because they were not methodically discipled. They were not methodically mentored. Hallelujah. So everything that we share week in, week out, uh, among other factors, spiritual arsenals that are equipping you. Why are they equipping you? So that number one, you have enlightenment, knowledge. But number two, so that you will know how to use these tools that have been given to produce results. Why are your results important? John chapter 15 and verse 8. John chapter 15 and verse 8. This is why you need results in your life. Herein is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. Why do you need results in your life? Matthew chapter 5 from verse 13. The Bible says you are the salt of the earth, it says. Is that true? The salt of the earth. That means you add value and you preserve your territory. You are salt. You need that result. It then says that you are the light of the world. The definition of darkness is the world without you. You are the light of the world. There are names that are exclusive to God alone. Man cannot claim that name. But when it has to do with light, both God and man are light. There are names that he freely shares with us. One of it is he is the son of God. We are sons of God. One of it is his light. We are light. Are we blessed? Do you know why I believe the Holy Spirit just took me this route? Because everything that we teach in this house by God's grace must be seen with respect to all the things that are aforementioned. When you begin to teach believers mysteries in the kingdom that are not connected to a larger body of truth, they, this is where carnality comes in for instance if you begin to teach on things like maybe say wealth and prosperity you begin to teach on things like career destiny and the rest teaching it in isolation to kingdom come teaching it in isolation to the revelation of jesus will only fuel the existing lost in many people you see why some of these teachings seem to destroy 
but when it is brought in perspective then you see that Jesus is glorified Jesus is revealed hallelujah can we teach tonight now father open my eyes and let me see please lift your voice and pray for the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom for the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom hallelujah praise the name of the Lord I felt very strongly stirred by the way a series on the various graces there's one more left on love but I suspended it because there is another series that you'll be part of there is a grace that can cause men to love God and to love men it is a grace that is at work in this house and um, but we'll leave it and attach it to another series that is coming is that true tonight very briefly and then we'll pray i'm teaching on the spiritual pathway to greatness please i pray that you pay attention this is a very powerful teaching that will be relevant both for you your loved ones and those who are connected to you it is important that we learn the ways of God the Bible says that in the last days when the mountain of the Lord is lifted above every other mountain and every hill it says nations will come and men will say come let us go to the mount of the Lord the house of Jacob and he will teach us his ways the spiritual pathway to greatness the Bible clearly tells us that everybody has a great destiny in Christ everyone born of God and everyone currently walking upon this earth right now has a great destiny in Christ in Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 7 Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 7 Paul was speaking and he made a quotation that was referring to Jesus but then by extension to his church and to believers in general then said I lo I come in the volume of the book as it is written of me to do thy will O God that means there is no such thing as happenstance or mistakes that everybody who came has something connected to their lives and their destinies as far as God God's predeterminate counsel is concerned. No one walking on the earth is useless. No one walking on the earth, regardless how you arrived here, provided you made it here, there is an allocation as far as destiny is concerned for you. If you're with me, say amen. amen. This is very important. The Bible lets us know that in Christ, that we can have great destinies, and that greatness is the heritage of the saints not just godliness but greatness these are some of the benefits and the provisions that we have as sons in light the heritage of greatness is our birthright the heritage of greatness is God's desire for every single one of us are we together Philippians chapter 3 please let's read from verse 13 and 14 Philippians chapter 3 from verse 13 and 14 lets us know we have a great destiny. I count not myself to have apprehended, he says, but this one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind, I reach forth to those things that are before. Uh huh. I press towards the mark of the price of the high calling. Apostle Paul says that he has a high calling. His calling is not an ordinary calling. His calling is a high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Everyone say, I have a high calling. One more time, say, I have a high calling. 
that means there is nothing ordinary about your life and my life as far as destiny is concerned how about the heritage of greatness genesis chapter 26 and verse 13 genesis chapter 26 and verse 13 it says and the man works great say amen, amen. and went forward say amen again and grew until he became very great a version says and he began to be great that means there was a day he was not the man works great he went forward he grew until he became very great why because Isaac was coming from Abraham and there was that covenant of greatness Genesis 17 and verse 6 Genesis 17 and verse 6 our heritage of greatness and an enviable destiny in Christ I will make thee exceeding fruitful and I will make nations of thee say amen, amen. and kings shall come out of you amen. this is a promise now you see whilst you hear the Holy Spirit reveal this to you you are tempted and even manipulated by the devil to think of your background and you're looking at where you're coming from you're looking at all the things that have happened in and around your life and like Nathaniel you can say about yourself like he said about Jesus can anything good come out of Nazareth let's start the scripture in Psalm 71 and verse 21 the Bible even tells us that not only does God desire for us to be great, but that the greatness He's given us can still increase. He says, Thou shall increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. So we are examining the spiritual pathway, having established the fact that we have a high calling and we have an enviable destiny in Christ. We have established the fact that it is not sin and it is not anti-christ and anti-god for the saints in light to desire greatness because god put it in everyone to be great is that true hallelujah genesis chapter 12 verse 1 and 2 this is the beginning of the encounter that abraham who was an idol worshiper from or of the chaldeans he would meet the God of the Hebrews who would later become his God and have a covenant with him that would be, become the basis for the coming of Jesus and even our redemption. 12 verse 1 and 2. Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, from thy kindred, from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show you. If you love Jesus, read verse 2 with me. Ready? Read. And I will make of thee a great nation. Uh -huh. And I will bless thee and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. Just stop there. As at the time he was telling Abraham this, it had not yet happened to him. This was a prophetic word tied to conditions that if met will release and actualize this word. Are we together now? So he's telling Abraham, I know you are an idol worshiper and you have your house, your family, but I have chosen to call you. Now, when you study from scripture, the first person that was called was not really Abraham. It was his father, Terah. But the father did not meet the condition that made for this blessing. And now God comes to call Abraham. Come out of your father's house. Come out of all of these places because this is what I want to do. This is your destiny. I want to make of thee a great nation. I want to bless you. I want to make your name great. Thou shall be a blessing. In fact, let's read verse 3. Verse 3, please give it to us. It says, I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee. There is a revelation here I want you to learn. For every one person who curses you, there are many them who, blesses, who bless you. You see the ratio, I will them that bless you, him that curse you. There are always more people willing to bless you and partner with God over your life than one person who may want to curse you. So if the person in your village is one, we are here, the family is here, the angels are here. And in thee 
shall all the families of the earth be blessed now you may be tempted to say that this is just for Abraham but Paul gave us perspective in his Pauline epistle that when God made this promise it was to Abraham and his seed D that seed being Christ and Galatians chapter 3 and verse 29 says and if ye be Christ's then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise that means what he told Abraham through Christ can become our reality you see the connection now it is from Abraham through Christ now it is our reality so greatness is our destiny and when I say greatness I don't mean some of this carnal pursuit for greatness that has no kingdom perspective remember that we already gave a background tonight that everything that we seek and everything that we communicate it is the whole counsel of God but it is res with respect to the revelation of Jesus and the glorification of the same it says and I if I be lifted from the earth I will draw all men is that true and I've shared with you that one of the ways that God gets glory is by glorifying the sons every father is glorified when his sons are glorified John 17 and verse 1 Jesus lifted up his eyes unto heaven and he prayed a prayer and he said father the hour is come here is the protocol for God being glorified glorify thy son that thy son may glorify thee so if the sons are not glorified the father cannot be glorified this is the principle of shared dominion the father does not glorify himself his glory comes from the excelling of the son the son does not glorify himself his glory comes from the excelling of the church in partnership with the holy spirit the church cannot glorify herself her glory comes from her dominion over the cosmos principalities and powers inclusive so everyone in the Kedah has the glory that they receive dominion over creation is how the glory of the church is revealed the dominion of the church is how in partnership with the Holy Spirit is how the Son is glorified and in the glorification of the Son the Father is glorified no confusion this is the protocol have we learned today but there is a biblical pathway and I'll be very fast over this so that we'll pray many believers do not know that there is a protocol to greatness they desire to be great in ministry they desire to be great in business in career and so on and so forth and for many people um, we just guess and shadow box our way and we are not able to attain that level of spiritual efficiency to rise so that we can do much for the kingdom now in your desire to be great the first information i want to bring very quickly tonight is that with respect to greatness there are two principal seasons in the life of everyone with respect to greatness with respect to the subject of greatness there are two principal seasons in the life two principal seasons are you ready the season number one is called the season of preparation please write it down the first season that every believer in Christ who desires to do much for the kingdom especially at this end times there is no instant manifestation in the kingdom the season of preparation please pay attention to the things you'll be learning the season of preparation It is important for you to know that if you are not prepared for anything on the day of manifestation you will fail is that true even in our, our human context there are students who prepare for exams and they excel there are people who have to prepare for interviews for promotion and if they prepare and they do write the interview or whatever it is in whatever form the interview comes when they excel they are promoted and then they increase in rank that is how it is also in the kingdom two major seasons very quickly the season of preparation now there are three phases under this season i want to rush very quickly there are three phases under this season of preparation the first phase is called the face of discovery 
please pay attention the face of discovery you will never be able to actualize destiny and you will never be able to walk in the fullness of your call until you go through this phase of discovery please look up many people violate this phase of discovery and yet they want to be mightily used by God yet they want to become influences and references across territories it does not happen that way this is the spiritual protocol non-negotiable no exceptions the season of preparation and the first phase in that season is the season of discovery are we still together what do you discover number one your first discovery in life if you want to be great is to discover God discovery God God Almighty that encounter with the God of the Bible is the first thing anybody who wants to be great the kingdom's way you must go through that phase of discovery hear me the first thing you discover is not the family you come from in order of importance the first thing you discover people discover all kinds of things but God the scriptural basis for this is found in Genesis 1 verse 1 in the beginning God that is the spiritual protocol Genesis 1 verse 1 in the beginning the first four words recorded in the Bible in the beginning of anything you start with God in the beginning of business God in the beginning of ministry God in the beginning of marriage and a home God in the beginning of parenting when you violate that formula you have compromised on greatness God's way now you can route greatness through some other formula and then face the consequences of the side effects that come with them are we learning now in the beginning now most times people involve God but he does not take that first place we add him like you are putting salt in soup and we just add him go okay God so you don't harass me okay you are here no the protocol is that he must be the author otherwise he cannot be the finisher if he's not the author he will not be the finisher are we together now yes in the beginning God so you discover God we see this in the life of Moses I wish I had time but I want us to pray but just write for reference in Exodus chapter 3 from verse 1 to 15 Exodus chapter 3 the text for this is 1 to 15 but give us verse 13 for the sake of time the Bible tells us about this Hebrew boy who was saved from death and then he ran away from Egypt and was at the backside of the mountain tending Jethro his father in lordship and then he's open to an encounter before he discovered any other thing he discovered God the God of the Hebrews Moses said behold when I come to the children of Israel and shall say to them the God of our fathers had sent me to you and they shall say unto me what is his name what shall I say unto them very good question and God said unto Moses, Yad hey, wah hey, Yahweh, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shall you tell them. It is true that they want to be delivered, but this is what I desire. I desire that they know me. I am has sent you. Are we together? So the first thing you have to discover is God most people don't pay attention to God can I tell you this in your spiritual training with God let me give you an advice and you can use this as a template to mentor other believers when you are starting with believers don't start teaching them things about success prosperity when you really want to mature believers this is the way God led us this is the way God led our fathers this is the way God led people from scripture when you meet God he does not talk about any other thing yet himself until he reveals himself so when you are training believers you must 
take dedicated time to expose them to God everything God passion for God fire for God then when that foundation of God is settled you can now begin to delve into other subjects if you compromise this you're going to have people who are lopsided in their growth the formula is in the beginning God the first thing you discover is God number two for the sake of time the second discovery is yourself the second discovery is yourself now that you have discovered God you can discover yourself if you do not know who you are Sinaj taught us in her song that if you don't know who you are there are many things you will not be able to walk in you cannot walk in power you cannot walk in miracles you cannot live a life of favor why you don't know who you are the nation of israel forgot their identity that they were a covenant people and when they were sent to go and spy the land they came back with an evil report they said we were like grasshoppers god didn't say it satan didn't say it they said it to themselves it's not like satan said repeat after me you are grasshoppers we are grasshoppers no no by themselves they call themselves grasshoppers i'm walking in power I'm walking in miracles I live a life of favor. I know I'm walking in power. I live a life of favor. Very important. You must know who you are. We teach in our school of ministry, and 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 there is a course where we teach the students who you are. You know and i teach them in that course that there is something called identity crisis let's borrow two minutes of their lecture there is something called identity crisis you know what identity crisis is identity crisis is the resultant effect of not comprehending your worth the moment you do not know who you are the devil and men and this bedeviled world will paint a picture that you are not there are many people today who are under needless pressure trying to be who and what they are not it's not in the blueprint of their destiny because i taught you here remember i don't know what discussion we're having when i taught you that psychologically speaking there are certain indices that measure fulfillment is that true yes one of it is security another is variety one of it is growth another is love and acceptance there is a craving in the human nature for love and acceptance and chances are that if you have not stayed with the word are we together now yes like bishop david oedipo will say to find out your picture from scripture to be able to find out this is what god has said concerning me this is who i am based on what scripture said not based on what your mind has said not based on what your background has said was it not paul that said there is as it were many voices and that none of them is without effect your background has a voice remember who you are failures all through and you hear that voice then unfortunately and i know and i pray that it's changing thank god for christian schools but if you are not fortunate to go to a school that calls upon the name of the Lord, now you hear another voice added to that negativity by, by teachers and all of that. They look at you and say, you are dull, you are almost demonic, I don't know how you got here, I don't even know where you are going. And I can tell you because you respect them, you will believe it. And then, with every sense of respect and apology, parents have a major role in in destroying the self-worth of children by the time you begin to minister words curses and words that are not consistent with scripture by the time an average child is 10 12 years subliminally he has already received all kinds of suggestions about who he is so now that they think they are weak the devil will now begin to market templates that can make you belong 
that's why people join occultic societies that's why people join all kinds of things they say they want to belong when satan came to jesus the first test was the test of identity the first test the very first test was a test of identity if you are truly the son of god turn these stones to bread jesus said i don't need to prove to you the voice already spoke that i am his beloved son man shall not live by bread alone but every word you had the word when he announced it everything under heaven had it including you don't ask me that question you already know i'm the son of god so when life and friends and society sadly and the sociological context of our world now forces you to do things and be things to show you are great you can tell them no 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 i'm a civilized person but i have limits i know who i am don't just tell me to dress the way you want to show i am civil to talk the way you want to live the way you want no within the boundary of of a civilized world i will conform to that which is an advantage but i know who i am based on scripture I am the beloved of God behold what manner of love the father has bestowed upon us in that we are called the sons of God there are many names that the Bible calls us light salt ambassadors kings priests are we learning now so you discover God you discover yourself the next thing that you discover under that stage of discovery is you discover your abilities your giftings and your abilities please pay attention please pay attention there is always a rod in your hand oh dear moses that is the rod you will use to walk signs and wonders it is not only god you discover it is not only yourself you discover there is something god has given you that is the rod you are going to use moses be careful to not throw that rod one day you will need it to pass the red sea one day to become the symbol of your leadership can i tell you this everyone here seated looking at me following online and will be following by way of rebroadcast or whatever platform it comes through can i tell you sincerely there is something god has put within you that the world is desperately waiting for to receive this is not just some motivational talk this is truth based on scripture nobody came here empty everybody came here as an expression of the fullness of the life and the power of Jesus if you are Joseph we need your leadership and your ability to interpret dreams if you are Deborah we need your strength and your dexterity in war if you are Moses we need your passion to be able to communicate with God and prophetically drive the people out of captivity. Everybody in scripture that was used of God, there were things God gave them. David could sing. He used that grace to write the Psalms today that has brought all kinds of deliverance. David was a warrior and he used to fight valiantly in his lifetime. David had leadership. Everything David had eventually was featured in the palace. What do you have in your hand? That was what the Lord told Moses. What do you have in your house? Second Kings chapter 5. Second Kings chapter 4, please. 4, I meant to say. The Bible says there was a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophet. 2 Kings 4 from verse 1. She said unto Elisha, My servant, thy husband is dead, and thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. And the creditor, aha, uh -huh, the creditor is come to take him, to take unto him my two sons to be born men. Next verse, please. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? And he asked a question. He says, Tell me, what hast thou in your house? Hear the woman's reply. This is the reply of many of us when destiny calls on you. What do you have in this house of earthen vessel? Here's what we say. Nothing. Thine handmaid had not anything in the house except a pot of oil. I have nothing except an ability to sing. I have nothing except 
great charisma and leadership prowess i have nothing except passion and hunger for god i have nothing except the ability to be trusted be careful what you call nothing be careful what you call nothing i have nothing except some degree of business acumen i have nothing except that when i sleep whatever i see in my dream truly happens i have nothing except the dream that i have that i saw myself on a crusade ground while i was sleeping on a mat in a hut i saw myself speaking before nations that's all that i have he says what do you have you must discover what you have can i tell you this every great man that you admire today whether in the kingdom or in the secular whether in ministry in politics in business they were men and women who among other factors got to a point in their lives where they discovered that there is something valuable that god has given me hear me your sense of self-worth among other factors is tied to the perception of the value you have about yourself we live respectfully speaking in a very fake world today where everybody tries to do this and leave this if you are not wearing this oh how how much is your shoe two thousand naira and people laugh as two thousand naira did you make it yourself and people laugh and make you feel stupid and you stand there wondering what to do and then you go out of your way to live a fake life you've heard me say don't fake what can be real Your self-worth is never about any exterior thing around you. Thank God for the beauty, the glamour, the grace. That is wonderful. But if you put your trust in anything outside you, you are insecure. Can I tell you, most of the things that we face in our world today, especially as it makes for interpersonal relationships and all of that, they are a derivative of this secret frustration. Psychologists have said it and have taught you again that you look at life from the lens of the perception of your value. If you feel you are not valuable, you will interpret life from the lens of that frustration. If you are a happy man, the world is a happy place for you. If you are a sad person, the world is a sad place for you. If you are a godly person, in the midst of all the decadence that goes on, you can see God, you can see what he's doing. If you are someone who is a failure, you would look at life from the lens of your experience. What sees thou? It's a, it's a report card. Is God speaking to us tonight? So the first stage when you are preparing for greatness is discovery discovery of god as the almighty the beginning and the end the one who holds your life and your destiny and then number two discovery of yourself so that you become healed once and for all from the scar that society will try to bring as a result of the injury that they will give you for not trying to conform to certain patterns that society depicts to measure greatness so if you do not find 10 cars in my house for instance if you do not find a great mansion for instance if you do not find me wearing all the designers that should be nothing is wrong with these things in themselves if you don't see me speaking in a certain way if you don't see me snapping in front of an expensive vehicle society says you are failure and many of us have been deceived to believe it so we live our lives in secret and open frustrations trying to be what God already said you are are we blessed and then the discovery of your potentials I first heard this from the lips of my greatly revered mentor in life and in death Dr. Miles Monroe when I read his book on discovering your potentials when he said here's what he said that the wealthiest place on earth is not the gold mines in sub-saharan Africa around it's not it's not the oil mines in Nigeria and Iraq and all of that he said the most expensive the wealthiest place on earth he called it the symmetry 
why because that is where books died that were not written that's where dreams died that did not come to pass and he said little did he know that he would not live so long he said his assignment was not just longevity alone his focus was efficiency that Jesus lived for 33 and a half years and his impact till eternity will continue to be felt and he gave his all and truly he died empty one of the last books he wrote before he went to be with the Lord is called passing it on the principle of transgenerational relevance and legacy a man that cheated death indeed are we blessed you must find what it is that you have in your hands can I tell you this when the woman was saying nothing except a pot of oil the pot was hearing her and the oil was hearing her and here's what the oil was saying you call me nothing the same way your writing ability is saying do you know you can write about revivals is it not Robert Lerden that wrote one book God's generals that set fire today only God knows how many ministries have come from that book all kinds of books gifts Billy Graham discovered that he had the ability to love the Lord and to communicate effectively and he deployed that gift in his evangelical operation and today arguably one of the greatest evangelists in modern history who has lived what do you have in your hand what do you have in your house it is time to go back and stay with the Holy Spirit and take intentional inventory of everything that constitutes an advantage in your life because everything God gave you that constitutes an advantage will be used for your destiny can I tell you this Satan will usually flash to your face all the negative things around your life many of us do not see anything glorious about ourselves you are poor he will make sure you see that one you don't speak well he will make sure you see that one you spend 15 years in the village he will drum it to your ears but the wonderful things god has made out of your life he will not allow you see in the name of jesus may you see clearly can i tell you this our fathers of faith in this nation fathers of faith across africa every one of them got to a point where they had to deploy that gift that God gave them to be able to serve the purposes of God today if you do not find that rod in your hand you will be ashamed when you stand before Pharaoh because there will be nothing that would demonstrate the glory of God it was the rod God gave Moses that was used to prove the almightiness of God if you neglect your gift there will be nothing in your life to prove indeed that God is mighty over you you must obtain grace from God seated here looking at me following in all the overflows outside from whatever nation whatever TV station there are people listening to me you have dreams God has planted things in your life can I tell you this when it looks like certain individuals are superstars the difference between a superstar and whatever is this discovery nobody is intrinsically exceptional above any other person no everybody born of a woman was once a baby in the hand of that woman even if you were born royalty you were still a baby Jesus as the son of God did not automatically become savior even though he was the word he had to go through this system of discovery at age 12 the bible tells us that he was at the temple what do you think he was doing at the temple he was learning everybody said discovery pay attention to this teaching because many of us are superstitiously hoping that destiny will just happen we are superstitiously hoping that greatness will just happen one day go better we say in this side of god's kingdom and it is so wrong provided you don't do anything until that one day more than admiring great people more than commending people who have done exploits in the kingdom whether in music whether in career in politics 
don't just sit down and clap for people use their lives as an inspiration that this man was once a baby in the hand of a woman what is the difference between this man and me not in a competitive way not in a way that communicates jealousy but in a way that challenges you greatness is simply the world acknowledging you for serving them effectively with your gift the feedback you receive from your world and your generation for effectively serving them with your gift is what we call greatness it appears as honor it has appears as priority living it appears as whatever it is but the truth is that when you use this that god has given you you discover it you have begun your journey to greatness let me do a quick recap and we move forward that there are two main phases when it has to do with manifesting greatness in the kingdom the first um, season is called the season of preparation and i'm now defining the activities that happen under that season that that season of preparation is broken into three phases phase one is discovery you discover god you discover you you discover what he has given you say amen, amen. the second thing that you do in the second phase under preparation is called development the phase of development now that you have discovered God now that you have discovered you now that you have discovered what God has given you look up please Miles Monroe calls it and the dictionary defines it as potential do you know what potential is potential is what a thing can become but it's not potential potential means untapped um, resources whether human whether material whether mental when you talk of a potential or you talk of a thing in its potential form it means that there is value that can be derived from it but not at that state for instance we celebrate and we thank God for the gift of crude oil in this country but if you happen to go and watch them mine oil when oil actually comes out and you see it you will run away from that place because it's a dark slippery paste of smelly substance and yet that is what has powered the economy of many nations that oil that comes out is not the one your car is looking for that's not the one you will queue to pay for discovery is good but can i tell you this there are many people with dreams with notebooks full of dreams the greatest way to bring your dream to pass is to wake up from that dream if you wake up from that dream then you are ready to make that dream come to pass but for as long as it remains a dream it remains there forever everybody who turned their dreams to reality did that by first waking up please look at me you must obtain grace from God to refine two aspects of your life number one you must refine your gifts number two in fact in order of priority when it has to do with development you must refine your mind then you must refine your gift if you refine your gift alone you will still be frustrated there are two aspects that must be refined when it has to do with development number one is your mind number two your potential the mind is a very important component as far as excelling and greatness is concerned in this kingdom why because you see the bible tells us that um how does it put it now it says let this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus there was a mindset and a belief system philippians 2 5 that jesus had that made him great he didn't just say let this power be in you it's not only the power that was in jesus that you need you also need the mind that was in jesus without the mind that was in jesus the power that was on him will be useless in your life you need both his mind and his power everybody say his mind many people want the power that was in jesus but you do not want his belief systems your belief system is a summation 
of your paradigms your viewpoints your perspectives can i tell you we are made or destroyed by our belief systems i have taught it here there's no need going to, you know to share it again but maybe just for one or two minutes let me tell you this that our mindsets are formed largely from number one culture number two our past experiences is that true number three our failures number four our association number five our levels of exposure all of these are factors that become the shapers of our belief systems the average person in Nigeria and Africa, by the time you are age 10, by the time you are a teenager, you would have been exposed to too many activities that would have, respectfully speaking, dehumanized and demean your perception of yourself. Therefore, the Bible says, Romans chapter 12 and verse 1 and 2, I beseech thee, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies it says a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto god he calls it your reasonable act of worship verse 2 says be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed say transform what does it mean to transform to evolve into superior versions of yourself that's what it means to be transformed to be transformed means to evolve into superior versions of yourself like a fly evolves from egg lava pupa and then adult you must obtain grace from god to evolve you've heard me teach it that your destiny is looking for you but not this current version of you the version of you that your destiny is looking for you are yet to become it the most important thing about success and greatness is not the achievements is what you become or have to become to obtain it what you have to become to be great is greater than the greatness itself are we blessed don't forget this the most important component as far as your growing into greatness is concerned is not the greatness itself and the possibilities that surround that realm is the person you are forced to become until you attain that greatness becoming is greater than doing you really become successful more from becoming than doing but the people that do know their God knowledge they shall be strong becoming then they shall do exploits it is knowledge transformation and then action not knowledge and action knowledge transformation is the reason why we do right things and get wrong results because you only do right things when you have become everybody say development i'm challenging everyone under the sound of my voice therefore that we have to obtain grace from god if we are truly serious about manifesting our kingdom destinies and rising unto greatness we must obtain grace from god having discovered our giftings we must begin an intentional a radical and non-emotional non-emotional project of transformation when you contend for transformation emotionally you will not go far when you feel sleepy when you are awake when you feel angry when you feel hungry no you must enter a covenant with yourself that come rain and come sunshine every 24 hour that god gives me will a major part of it will be invested in my transformation how are you transformed the bible tells you number one through the renewing of your mind how do you renew your mind by supplying into your mental space superior information superior word-based information and then repeating them until they superimpose the negative thoughts that have surrounded your mind hearing the truth once is not enough you must hear it again and again until it gains dominance over your mind then the bible now says out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks you can declare in prayer and then all of these other things and then the bible also says for as he thinketh in his heart or mind he says so is he he didn't say so he will become you already are what you are thinking mental transformation is a miracle believers especially people who are 
largely spiritual and passionate about God because of that drive to encounter the Holy Spirit the power the anointing of the Holy Spirit many times we who God has trusted with grace for the miraculous for signs and wonders we have um, we have fallen prey as far as emphasizing the importance of being mentally transformed because we feel what is the need for having an enlightened mind after all I have anointing after all I can pray after all I'm spiritual it takes more than that as far as your excelling is concerned Jesus did not just wait until he was 30 even before we see him praying we saw him in the temple learning when Satan came to him he didn't say I assume he said it is written are we together you must obtain grace from God to sit down dear Nigerians especially the young population let's sit down and learn this this passion to run around and have premature manifestation sit down sit down we must obtain grace from God but apostle I went to school you know it's not enough you must sit down there are three levels of education there is unlearning there is relearning there is learning there are things you have to unlearn there are things you have to learn as new there are things you have to relearn as emphasis if these three levels is not happening to you you are not really educated education is not just an awareness of a body of information no you must unlearn deconstruct many belief systems that are wrong you must learn then you must relearn it is unlearning learning and relearning that is education i will say it again if you want proper enlightenment not just spiritual enlightenment secular enlightenment you must unlearn you must learn you must relearn develop your mind ask any ceo the difference between an exceptional ceo a fulfilled politician a technocrat an intelligent person one who is doing much for the kingdom a great man of God our fathers of faith are all over this nation we love them we honor them we admire them can I tell you something one consistent thread that runs across all the fathers of faith in this nation is that they are exceptionally brilliant people mention one dull one and you'll be the first mentioning it and the only one mentioning it there is no dull father of faith that I know who is making global impact because ministry is more than preaching preaching only accounts for at least 30 percent of ministry there is administration there is leadership there is diplomacy there are all kinds of factors involved in ministry for them to win this much it is the holy spirit in partnership with an enlightened mind we have this idea that god just landed on them and commissioned them find out their labor find out the things they do the little that we are doing for God here, we can feel the heat and the disadvantage of not being enlightened. Please, I encourage you, from families to institutions, religious and secular institutions, business and all of that, we must settle down to contend for knowledge. Settle down to contend for knowledge. Challenge yourself to be enlightened. And don't let the devil make you think that what I'm sharing tonight is not important. It is absolutely important. The destinies of people are tied to your rising and your greatness. It is selfish to refuse to be great because more than yourself, there are people who will eat from the foot of your greatness. Are we together? So discovery and then refining. When you begin to refine your mind and refine your gifts, it ushers you into the next phase of your season of preparation called the season of testing. Write it down. The season of testing. Oh dear, I wish I had time. The season of testing. Can I tell you this? If it is God you are doing business with, before he commits to you destinies, before he commits to you anointings and graces, you must be tested. Genesis 22, please, from verse 1. We're still looking at 
the life of Abraham and it came to pass after these things remember Genesis 12 Abraham has an encounter with God he begins his journey 10 chapters later we see him stepping into the next phase it came to pass after these things that God did what tempt some verses will say test Abraham what was the test Abraham he said behold I am here next verse please he said take now thy son thy only son Isaac whom thou lovest take note of lo only and lovest only son whom thou lovest get thee into a land of Moriah and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell you verse 3 here's what the Bible says and Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went on to the place which God had told him we'll continue later on but look look at this look at this God tells Abraham I want to make you a father of nations I will bless them that bless you cause him that causes you in thee shall all the families be blessed in other words I'm going to make you the landlord of the earth he willed the earth to Abraham are we together now and then Abraham did not know that as he kept obeying God transiting he would get to a point where God will now say now we are getting to the season where prophecy and destiny is about to be activated but not without a test the Bible does not leave us in the dark as to the fact that everything that was happening was a test but Abraham did not know it was a test can I tell you this this final phase of your preparation season is the hardest phase for most people ask any great man they will tell you the season of test is a season where you have to obtain grace from God the season of test will test you across three things number one it will test you across trust and integrity you will be tested you will be tested you will be tested your capacity to be a person of integrity will be tested beyond measure number two the second test is the test of patience the test of patience I can tell you this if it is God who is lifting you he will stretch you from pillar to post man of God let me tell you what he will do to you as a great man on fire God loving you your pastor just looks at you and says you are going to be the person opening the gate at the church you look at the potential of your anointing compare it to the miracle that just happened before you came and say pastor sorry I hope you know that two among these ten testimonies came directly from me and yet God says go and do it can I tell you this the test of greatness achieves many things among them it must humble you to your lowest otherwise it's not God lifting you some of these insulting derogatory experiences we go through the man of God may not know God is using him to test you nobody knows that it's a test it's, it's only God it's not like men know if a man tries to test you he's not God it is at the end looking from hindsight you would know that it was not about Isaac it was not about Abraham it was about God saying for me to commit this kind to you this is where many people fail they fail the test can I tell you this the test of destiny will insult your pedigree the test of destiny will turn you sometimes you look at yourself and say I'm not a fool be careful the moment it starts looking like God is just allowing things to fall your hand like we call it be careful there are people today who would have become mighty men and women of God if they had submitted themselves to cleaning the chair they say no way I can't be carrying this heavy prophetic grace especially when you are serving and your superiors may not seem to be as gifted as you maybe someone is in that face right now listen carefully I've trained the leaders in this ministry to understand that anything at all God gives you do it with all your heart you do not know what season you are stepping into are we together 
go and ask many great men do you know what Stephen was doing before he became that mighty man Stephen was part of those who were serving tables there are many great men today who started by scrubbing the floors of their CEOs and while they were scrubbing the floors they will hear discussions happening and they were cleaning all kinds of things while their contemporaries were saying I'm too big they were saying no 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 I love the Lord father it's a privilege for me to do what I'm doing the moment you are too big to be tested you are also too big to be great or too small to be great I have told God and I told God this right from before he lifted me no matter what it is that I have to do is in the name of the Lord and I'm serving you I will do it with all my heart I stand before the God of heaven and I'm telling you now if the Lord asks me to drop this leadership and leave everything and go back to be an usher even in Koinonia here I stand by the God of heaven I will do it I know you think I'm not all right but I will do it it's better to be wrong with God let me tell you how you know that the door of greatness is already closing in you the moment what you were doing before you now become too big to do it check yourself go for a retreat quickly some of us as it is today if you hold a broom you will be sick may God forgive you in the name of Jesus Christ because you see can I be honest with you one of the ways to walk in humility is that occasionally in your life disengage yourself with certain privileges even if it's for a day and you go back to the things you used to do they will administer a measure of humility to keep you balanced because you see as you rise there will be people to serve you protocol you see me coming in and you see all these my people everything and some of you this is what you are looking at when you look at all these things say, oh god i must be like joshua selman not his prayer life not his word life what you want is this one and god says you lie i'm not i'm not you don't cheat me like that you go back and start that school of the spirit the season of testing this is the season where it will look like God is not even answering your prayer I've taught you here as a man of God you can pray for somebody who will go for the crusade and be raising people from wheelchairs and they bring somebody who is suffering from constipation you will almost lay all your hands on the person and nothing happens and the person says I'm disappointed I was told so much about you uh, I, I, I thought and you say me and God says keep quiet tell him God bless you you say God bless you and he leaves and you feel stupid at a point you say God what is the name of all these things God will send you to go and preach somewhere as soon as you finish you'll be waiting thinking an honorarium is coming they will just carry maybe orange or banana hold it in a leather and say sir may the lord who called you honor you and bless you listen 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 and you are standing there and wondering okay a three days conference and god says accept it quickly and go he's winning you of the lost for things tests most of us miss these seasons because we have an idea that the moment you are gifted the next thing after being gifted is celebration you lie not in god's economy there will be a season of test this is where many people are bought destiny and are bought greatness they are too big to serve they are too big to pray they are too big to do whatever it is that they do believe what I'm telling you for many years in my life I wanted to buy a car but God prohibited me this is true and at a point I said what is all this one now a car that will help me is still this gospel thing <laughs> the making of the great is painful you are not the only one apostle you don't know what is happening to me you think so how do you think everybody who got here got here it looks you see that season makes it painful and you think it's only you this is why mentorship is powerful because when you see the people sitting at the table of greatness like kung fu masters they laugh at you they say just continue 
continue you will get here God can give you an assignment and say from today and for the next six months four days out of every seven days you are fasting and from 12 o'clock till 4 you are praying and you say God for what I thought you said I'm a kingdom financier he says that's exactly the training of a kingdom financier God trains you as a kingdom financier like he's training a revivalist you will say God confirm it with speed you will have a dream someone will send you a text God will send another word so that you must do it with the exact word you must fast and you must pray and can I tell you this you will fast for two three months thinking there is a mighty crusade coming nothing will happen till you finish that fasting this is a test I'm explaining this to you because many of you are in this season now I tell you lift up your eyes look beyond the pain your salvation is near test apostle God is calling me to be a kingdom billionaire huh he will not ask you to open an account he will ask you to empty everything in your account only god knows how many times that is the test i know you will cast that voice you say no god doesn't work like that i am telling you he works like that there is a way that god works like that there are demons yes but there is a way that god works you must give everything i've taught you that the price for all of god is all of you god will wait until they pay you arrears for one year he will not wait until they give you a seed it's easy when they touch you money but god will wait until they pay you your arrears and you say take that isaac go to a mountain he can even say you should sow it to someone you don't like a ministry you don't like yours is to obey what do you think being a kingdom financier is just having an account with money and business ideas no sir what do you think being a man of god is just having a gift and a platform to speak uh -uh. for everyone you see who has tasted of greatness there is blood dripping on the altar believe me when i tell you this the only way to get to the throne is to pass through the cross i'm speaking to someone now because you are in a season of your life just help those under the anointing you are in a season of your life where it looks like nothing is happening this is applicable to all men apostle when i sleep i see a vision of a church and god is saying i will be a great man serving the purposes of god but i don't know what is happening why is it that nothing seems to be moving in my life fear not god is working with you let me tell you this if you never get to a point in your life where you don't even know the name of what you are doing it's not god who is training you you get to a point in your life where you say god, what are we doing just tell me the name of what we are doing are you getting what i'm saying now you can get a job of two hundred thousand and a job of eighty thousand and god can tell you go for the job of eighty thousand you say god do you know that i'm taking care of four people he says just go there now you see what i'm saying is not marketable because this is not what many people learn about kingdom greatness sometimes you just learn that oh i i wish i were lying i would have just told you i'm joking but i'm not what i'm saying is very serious and i tell you there are no exceptions to it swallow your pride tonight come to the school of the spirit don't you know in his hands are the keys to eternal life it's a little here a little there and then your day will dawn is that working you changing everything in obedience to christ my brother my sister at this period of your life i want you to hold on the bible says do weeping endures there are times you cry but you still stay lord this fast i'm fasting as if i don't even know whether i'm touching my stomach or my back just fast it doesn't kill there are times that you sit down and you are praying and you are saying lord is it that i'm a pastor just encourage me by god says what you are is not your business you just know that you are a child of god and i'm making you become something If you want to claim the blessings of Abraham, be ready to carry Isaac to that mountain.
we live in a generation that claims people's anointings and refuses their sacrifices anybody that you know who has become great today find out what they did there is always a season of preparation if you see anybody who breaks that rule run away from them they have nothing to offer you i have i tell you sincerely if you see any greatness that does not have a story and a track record of consistency with god there is not much to offer i've cried in my life oh you see me smiling all the time i'm only smiling before you ask god ah, the burden of this ministry The first time we organized crusade as a ministry, then just starting, we didn't even have money to pay the transport fare. Brothers and sisters, this our generation must reduce this ungodly admiration that erodes the need for process. Please don't feel insulted. I'm only stressing this because I want to pound it into your spirit. Behind every throne you see, behind every throne you see there was a time i prayed for 72 hours non-stop my eyes did not know whether it was morning or night i don't say this to boast in the flesh but i am telling you ladies and gentlemen greatness does not just happen we live in a society that demeans the greatness and the value of people no I've had the honor and the privilege of knowing and being with a few of the fathers of faith in this nation. I tell you sometimes when you look at them, you can almost see in the spirit blood just dripping like rain on the ground. Their entire lives have become a drink offering. Before, even business people, before you admire people, you want to stretch your hands to the sick and they are healed. You want to tell someone stand up from a wheelchair and he stands you want to open a church or an assembly and god honors you with people please let me tell you this it is more than just claiming there is a school of the spirit there is a cup you must drink of and a baptism you must be baptized with they came to jesus and said can you grant that when you are exalted we will sit at your left and right he said the space is available but here is the condition can you drink of my cup and be baptized listen moses was a man who had been trained by the holy spirit do you know moses was a stammerer and yet look at the kind of heavy anointing he was carrying and he was quiet he didn't prophesy when the anointing on him came on 70 elders not children a part of it all, none of them could stand and control it yet that's what one man was carrying and he was quiet training gives you stability it gives you stamina when you are in the school of the spirit especially say as a minister he will teach you to know when to speak he will teach you to know when to be quiet it's not everything that offends you say, people are offending me in this church you've not gone through the school of the spirit when you go through he teaches you stability why do they do trainings for people before they promote them even in organizations am i right on that that before you promote people they call them and they have specialized trainings question what do they teach them there that they've not taught them before you are taking a director or something to become an agm and you sometimes they even go for retreats our politicians in this nation go for retreats what are they saying there the testing process is very difficult God will test everything he will be using you to do. One day you will pray and it will look like the prayer is not answered and God will watch you. After you have preached and said, there is nothing my God cannot do. You will feel as if his headache, whether it's from the back of your head or the front, you may not be able to explain. And like Paul, you will lay your hands. I'm sorry I'm not giving us a lot of scriptural references. I'm hurrying up. I besought him thrice that this turn be taken away from me and he says my grace is sufficient for you for my my strength is made perfect in your weakness how do you help the poor when you never become like that there is a man of God that God gave an assignment for one or two years 
that he should leave all his money and everything and go and live somewhere in this nation and he went and lived you would think he does not have anything it was the sacrifice in the course of that journey he received a burden for that land such a powerful evangelical burden and it changed his life on easy lies the head that wears the crown your season of preparation discovery development and refining and then the season of testing my prayer for you is that you will not give up during your season of test man of god hear me everything god told you he will still do that man of god that woman of god you are you don't look like it the bible says it does not yet appear just stay with god just stay with God. Dear CEO, it's true that God called you. You put your hands in your pocket. The only thing you touch is the end of your pocket. Don't worry. It is true you are a kingdom financier. It will not come the way you think it will happen. You are still in the school of the spirit. Can I tell you this? Don't be ashamed of your tears. Cry but stay. Whatsoever he tells you to do, do it. Let's hurry up so we can pray. When you are done with the season of preparation then you are open to the next season of your life it's called the season of manifestation oh hallelujah when you get to that season when you get to that season called the season of manifestation hebrews chapter 6 and verse 15 Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 15. Please read with me, everyone. One to read. And so, after he had what? He obtained the promise. One more time, everyone, please. And so, continuation to the story. After he had patiently endured. Endured what? The mockery. Endured what? The shame. Endured what? The pain. Endured what? The ridicule. Ask Noah when he was building the ark. There were people who were laughing and saying, This man, only God knows what you had. For 120 years, he was building that ark. But a season would come called a season of manifestation. If you cannot patiently endure, there is no promise. And so, after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. Your season of appearing is when God opens the curtain of your destiny and you are ready to stand on the stage of life. Can I tell you, the season of appearing happens so fast, it will surprise you. There has never been a slow, there, is, there are faces to it. There are three faces to your season of appearing, but it can happen instantly. Look at Joseph. Joseph is in the prison, not knowing that by the next day, by that same time, he would be the prime minister. the disciples were tarrying do you know the frustration of tarrying 120 people just waiting i'm sure somebody will say ah what is so special about the holy ghost that he has not come and they say keep quiet don't don't offend the lord just do what he asks you to do listen to what i'm telling you can i tell you this there is a mysterious way god designed the season of appearing it has indicators but you will never know the exact moment you just keep being faithful you don't know that by the next day you are going to get a job by the next day the business proposal that you have written you may never know oh Saul that you are one day left to meet Samuel when Saul left his father's house at a point they were tired they said let's go back he said no we can't go back we have come too far the same energy it takes to go back is the same energy it takes to continue let's finish up there is a seer and as soon as they went by the gates they met this mysterious man called Samuel Samuel laughed he said go up I will come and tell you what is in your heart you will get up one morning thinking it will be like any other day and God will position someone you do not know that you have just wrapped up your season of training I can tell you this how do you know your season of training has come to an end God himself defines the moment for you.
but I tell you this for everyone who ended seasons a man was there to lift his hands if you are Joseph Pharaoh is there if you are Saul Samuel is there for as long as you have not seen your Samuel keep moving for as long as you have not seen Pharaoh Joseph keep interpreting the dreams for free a day will come you will interpret it and it will not be for free again but qualify do it for the wine presser for free do it for the baker for free let the wine presser forget you for two years it's still a test because one night Pharaoh will send for you and on that day you will not interpret for free again why will Joseph interpret a dream for free interpret this for free and even beg the man and say please if you get to Pharaoh tell him I am innocent and he forgot but when the moment was come every night Jesus kept teaching them and telling them the promise of the Spirit is coming they waited and waited and waited for 50 days after he ascended but the Bible says now Acts chapter 2 and verse 1 we're praying now when the day of Pentecost was fully come it says they were gathered with one accord verse 2 please read with me the first two words one to read one more time one more time this is how the season of appearance happens and suddenly he got the job and suddenly the mantle of his destiny came upon him and suddenly the woman got pregnant after 30 years and suddenly God opened the door and suddenly the ministry began to blossom listen to me I can tell you this you know you are in your season of appearing because suddenly things just change with speed you look back and say how did this happen when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion the Bible says we were like them that dream when the Lord began to open doors of ministry for me when the Lord began to show me his mercy on that wise it came with such level of speed I could no longer accommodate my schedules what is this new thing that is happening to me it's as if a curtain just opened everywhere Joshua Selman I know how seasons of greatness comes but can I tell you this while you wait cry but wait keep doing what he's asking you to do you sow the seed like a fool and you are sitting down and God can I tell you this nobody has exhausted his season yet the moment you get to that season of appearing then the, the next level starts with the same cycle again preparation and then manifestation then the next cycle of the next realm preparation you don't exhaust it look at our father in the Lord Bishop David Oedeko when he was building the the faith tabernacle oh did he know another one was coming when Baba Deboe was building the old crown of redeem that one is a miracle already that is somebody's prayer point in many lifetimes but after enduring God now told him build three kilometers by three kilometers next instruction I remember those days in the ministry we used to sit on the ground on mats and then the days of Zaria and then now he's brought us into the city only God knows how many episodes of this greatness will happen in our lifetime that is why it's dangerous to over celebrate realms they would distract you there is a healthy way to celebrate and prepare because every time you attain a manifestation of a realm the preparation for the next realm should start immediately this is how champions live champions never plateau champions never rest as soon as they pat their back they know that you are beginning another circle listen to what i'm telling you some of you this is the reason why you rose up in ministry you rose up in your finances as soon as you made 1 million 10 million 100 million you just plateaued and say ah my soul find rest no you look at our fathers in the lord today it's as if they are just starting ministry i returned back from enugu and i was seeing the posters of our father baba kumuyi 
everywhere i said at this age this man is still traveling and holding crusades as if he's trying to gain visibility please sir huh? let me give you an advice when people clap for you sustain the courage to tell them is enough because i'm already focusing on the training for the next season let me wrap up we're going to pray give us mark chapter 4 from verse 26 let me show you the three levels of stepping into your season of appearing mark chapter 4 from verse 26 please look up everybody never forget this spiritual formula we're about to pray and he said so is the kingdom of god as if a man should cast seed where into the ground 27 and should sleep <laughs> and rise up night and day and the seed should spring and grow up he knoweth not is it in your bible there now here is the progression for the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself now when it has to do with bringing forth fruit three levels first the blade then the air after that the full-blown corn in the air when you begin to step into seasons of greatness everything will not happen at once there are levels first the air you will begin to see God honor you there are politicians today for instance who started as local government chairman when they won they celebrated and God told them be careful don't stop here there is still another height and then maybe they went to state house of assembly and so on and so forth and many are still on their way transiting there are business people I remember for some of you here you will sit down and tell yourself ah I just made one million and one million will look like forever for you you are happy coming from your background this is a miracle and God says celebrate but a day will come you will be feeding nations a day will come you will sign a million dollars two million dollars and give nations and they will ask you how did it feel the first day you say I still can't remember it was pastor Nathaniel Bassi dear friend and brother who was sharing about the things that were happening to him that a time came in this nation when he was under his late pastor nobody knew anything about him there are footballers who suffered as if God did not call them every club side pushed them away and they kept enduring and when their season came just one person looked at them and said come and that was it they never returned again we are going to pray let me share with you a story many years ago I went to a place called Premier Hotel in Ibadan when I went there um, it was night and I didn't even have the money to pay for any place for accommodation and I'm telling you I said God what is this I entered the place looked around you know wonderful place and I was seeing people and I could not pay for the place I could not even pay for any place looking around I was just hanging around I couldn't hang out in, inside so I was outside and then eventually I made up my mind I said I can't stay like this till morning there was a church somewhere I trekked and I found a church that was doing night vigil I joined them to do that vigil so that I don't waste there's no need wasting time I tell you this and then a few years later I would go to preach within that region and right from I think it was from the airport or so I can't remember the whole story now I saw people greeting me protocol people with cars and they were leading me to my place of stay guess where they took me when I saw myself climbing that hill tears filled my eyes and I said oh God only a fool says there is no God when they dropped me there they took me to their highest suit and i was there i usually travel with my people and they were outside they were swimming there was a program in the evening you know but these guys were swimming playing table tennis and i was watching them from that place i said it's not your fault my dear people
they were happy enjoying themselves by the pool and i was watching i said oh dear but what if be, because of what happened at that moment i said you know what this ministry will just fold it that's all do you know how many people are cheering you in the spirit and saying for our sake don't give up we have been waiting for you do you know how many unborn children who are saying doctor you will be the consultant who will deliver me or in case it's cs make sure you keep giving your best do you know how many people who are saying businessman it is your scholarship that is going to raise me to have an encounter don't give up there are nameless faces in the spirit joining the angels to say you have come too far you have come too far apostle you don't know how many times i've failed do not worry there is something called failing forward look up if you enter a plane and the plane is moving and you go back to the back seat are you going backward is the plane moving forward even though inside the plane you are moving back overall are you going backward that's what we call failing forward there is failure as an event there is failure as a person i'm speaking here tonight to a man of god who went for a crusade saying god called you and you went there nobody was healed only one person was saved the people said don't ever tell us god called you again and you return back wondering or a prophet who prophesied 10 cases you got zero you didn't everything you saw was wrong and you are wondering lord did you really call me what of a businessman who five businesses you lost money you failed completely i bring you words of comfort in this kingdom there is something called the season of preparation and the season of appearing during your season of preparation you discover God you discover you you discover that rod that you will be using to do mighty things for the kingdom can I tell you this no matter how many times you fall don't throw that rod that is the rod that you will part the Red Sea with make sure by the time you get to the Red Sea you don't get there alone get there with your rod your rod can be your voice your rod can be your hands your rod can be your brain your rod can be your character everything that can help you today we thank god for the privilege of this rod he has so trained us to hold it was once the rod of moses but when he handed it over to god it became the rod of god never call the rod of moses again it is called the voice of you but when you hand it over to God, it's now called the voice of God. It will now sing songs that will go around the world. It will now preach messages that will go around the world. Be careful when you laugh at people who are in their seasons of training. You may be laughing at your destiny helper and bury your head in shame forever. There are people who laughed at young people thinking they will never rise. There are people who laughed at business people. Can, can I tell you this? Sometimes God allows people to witness your failure so that they will be the defenders of your greatness. They will say, no, 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 no. I saw this man of God. I knew when he held a crusade that nobody was there. I saw this business person. I, my mother even gave him 20 naira. Don't be ashamed of your season of tears. The scar on your hand today you've heard me say it what you are ashamed of today will become your symbol of honor tomorrow are you ready to pray let's stop here tonight please rise up on your feet please no moving around lend me two or three minutes we are going to pray we are going to pray we are going to pray you are going to lift up your voice in the next two or three minutes and you are going to cry before the God of heaven you're going to tell him lord i am in my season of preparation grant me grace grant me grace lift your voice and pray if someone pray grant me grace to discover you some of you are just starting in destiny god may not be talking to you about purpose god may not be talking to you about ministry he may not be talking to you about your assignment he will talk to you about himself he wants you to know him not your talent God first lift your voice and pray cry before the Lord your maker in the beginning 
God over my life so what will start as a ministry starts as an encounter with God what will start as a kingdom financing ministry will still start as God what will start as a kingdom political career still starts as God everything no matter what it is if it is in its beginning it is God pray 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 for your destiny the phase of development lord grant me the discipline grant me the diligence may i not pamper myself may i not pamper my destiny let pain not be a a, a, a distraction let pain not constitute a limitation grant me the grace to endure like a faithful soldier building building my mind building my gifts building my mind building my value building my mind building my value if someone pray building my mind building my value this is a template that our fathers followed this is a template that our fathers gave us this is a template that scripture gives us we cannot compromise on the pattern pray for the season of pests oh that when God will prove me may I be faithful that when God will prove me may I have the stamina to remain ye who have continued with me ye who have continued with destiny I will finish my season of training with honor with nobility 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 hallelujah hear me now you are going to pray for sensitivity so that you will not be missing on the day the grace for appearance comes may it find you where god asks you to stay listen the devil can cheat you through offense the devil can cheat you through impatience the devil can cheat you through the manipulation of demonic spirits to not be where the grace for your season of appearance will find you i like you to pray and cry for grace sensitivity oh god to be where my lifting will meet me is someone pray Go ahead, please pray. Shapakatoskiata. This is a spiritual strategy for greatness. This is a spiritual strategy in this kingdom. There is no magic about how we rise. This is the protocol, non-emotional, non-negotiable, non-emotional, non-negotiable. I obtain grace. To be sensitive to the man that god will send when my season of appearing comes i will be sensitive to the instructions that come hallelujah hallelujah listen to me some of you before that season comes prepare your cv and keep it waiting so that if they ask for it in two minutes you can send war betides a man when your helpers call you say i'm not yet prepared that was a mistake of the five foolish virgins they were all virgins but what made some wise and foolish was some carried extra oil it was time the longevity of the time was what separated them just because you are among the virgins does not mean you will see the groomsman 
25 carried extra oil they said peradventure we are stretched beyond time we will stay from this oil and the others did not and even though the bible still respects the fact that they were virgins it said they were foolish virgins so while you are praying sometimes the prayer you are praying is not for ministry again it's for the days when you will need to stand alone there are extra things god is giving you don't throw them away don't throw the extra oil there are them that sell if you don't see them on time the bible says when they went to buy there was a lamentation behold the bridegroom the season of appearing is come and they, they say everybody got up they lit their lamp and for others the oil was not there and they said sorry even though you have waited this long you have still missed the season go to them that sell and buy that means you can buy on time because in any case you will still buy be sure that you don't buy too late buy when you are young buy before children come buy before responsibilities come buy before preaching engagements occupy you buy oil buy lamb buy before your fame goes away build character build grace build stamina that's buying the oil can i tell you this i look at my life today and with every sense of respect sometimes i look at it and i say this this public life sometimes can be so distracting i will pass and see something that i like on the street i can't stop to buy it because both the person selling it and everybody there it will become something else once upon a time i had my liberty to live my life a day will come you will not have the time to do what you're doing i'm telling you look how long we stay here there was a time we had all the liberty so when god is stretching you see yourself as going to them that sell some of you god is bringing you here it may not be convenient you come from very far and god says still come because a day will come you may not even be in this country again a day will come you may not even be in abuja again but elijah you ate small eat again the journey is still far please go back and listen to this message again go to koinonia global you will find it on youtube listen again and again and again take note of all these teachings that god has been bringing call somebody who you know is going through a season he does not understand tell him i have a message for you there is a spiritual strategy for greatness let this message explain to you the happenings in your life but as for me i made up my mind not to over celebrate realms because i know compared to where god is taking me and compared to where god is taking this ministry thank god for it but we are only starting i tell you this is not what i saw in the visions no you must insist till what god showed you comes to pass when god showed this we saw nations not a city so yours is to believe thank god for what god is doing across the globe but can i tell you as a great family of faith let us give god praise but let's not be too distracted there is a distraction that greatness and success at a level brings we can become full of ourselves koinonia god is doing abc compared to the miraculous we are just playing child's play compared to levels of fire to change territories this is just this is still a school of the spirit stay with god and let him be done with you and you will see that you will send one word and it will shift the spiritual climate of nations i leave you with this word tonight therefore hear me the bible says seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses it says let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us then it says to run with perseverance the race that is set before us looking up to jesus who is the author and the finisher of your faith modeling from him who for the joy that was set before him he endured the cross and despised the shame father we thank you for the privilege of coming to your house tonight in the name of jesus christ please would you give me one minute being that this um pastor came all the way to fellowship with us from goshen and we truly honor you alongside our fathers baba um Abioye and Bishop Oyedepo, 
these are fathers that i respect these are people who have brought us grace and it will not be a wise thing to just finish like this so please if i would just invite him to come and speak a blessing on behalf of goshen the grace upon living faith let's honor him as he comes hallelujah praise the lord this is a massive work let's celebrate jesus one more time i don't know about you i'm blessed to be around at this point in time The revival fire we are conducting here will last through your lifetime. Yeah. Every blessing declared today by his servant will stand the test of time in your life. Yeah. I join my faith with his servant, Apostle Joshua Selma. I pray over this house today that your desire is turned into a testimony. Yeah. Standing on the shoe of my father, Bishop David Olani Oedipo, Bishop David Abiyoye, I prophesy to your life, whatever is not working by the encounter of tonight, you will begin to walk. I stand on the existing grace on this altar. What you left as consigned at tomb before you came here, at your return, it shall turn for you for a testimony. That woman that is looking for the foot of the womb, your baby is on this altar tonight. Amen. That application that you are long overdue for, for a miracle job, your appointment letter is on its way coming to you. Amen. Every forces that make it work in the hand of our fathers in the faith, that same forces return home with you tonight. Or your desire, your expectation. He says, surely there is an hand and thy expectation shall not be cut off. I prophesy to your life, your expectation shall not be cut off. Yeah. In Luke 21, 13, as I drop the mic, he says, it shall turn for you for a testimony. Yeah. I don't know what is it, but I have good news for you. It shall turn for you for a testimony. Yeah. Be blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Let's celebrate him. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, please let me encourage you. We, I believe in the force of ingathering, just like we have learned from our fathers. And even though God has honored us, please hear me. I am very passionate about souls. And this is God's mandate for us. Can I encourage you? Don't say koinonia has crowds. This is not about crowd. Make sure that every time you come to church, please drag somebody and bring him to the house of the Lord. Many of you, when you hear these messages, you think about your family members and you think about your people. This is more than just trying to help a man of God to have this. This is not the idea at all. I must lend my voice and challenge you. Be a soul winner. If souls are not saved, lives will not be changed. A territory will not be transformed. So commit yourself to the ministry of ingathering. Commit yourself to helping and letting people know and see Jesus. Are we together now? Let them know God is changing lives and that you desire for them to be changed. Grant them access to the teachings. It's a gift that you can give them. There is a reason why it is free. It has always been free. So that the limitations of resources will be broken and you would have no excuse for your edification. And make sure that you continue to grow and this word will keep building you. In the name of Jesus. Very quickly, I want to make an altar call. Please let's minimize movement. You have received the blessing. You have heard the word. Some of you, you are in your season of preparation and you are even yet to start. Or perhaps you've started doing other things minus God. Please keep standing. I know you've been standing. Let's stand. We're almost wrapping up. There are people here. You came to church 
and you are saying apostle haven't heard you i know that i need jesus others you've given your life to jesus but you need to rededicate your life to jesus whether you are here in the overflow following from your home i am going to count one to five and give you an opportunity especially that you are within here please don't be ashamed don't wait for anyone to come before you i like you to boldly make that decision come to jesus he's giving you a new beginning are you ready one let's celebrate them as they come don't sit back if you are coming from the overflows please clear the way for them clear the way for them young and old all together god bless our daddy our father is coming god bless you is this how you celebrate salvation the wages of sin is death the bible says but the gift of god is eternal life through jesus christ his son keep coming win that war tonight you're saying apostle i'm tired of my life it's time for me to rise no one in my family has risen i know that i need jesus please come quickly i'm counting one to five and we'll be ready to pray if they are coming from outside around the pavement there or the balcony please come quickly join them very quickly two young and old come to jesus three keep coming jesus is calling you in the beginning god in the beginning god you can make that beginning start tonight or you can recycle seasons of defeat or failure in the beginning god four and finally five praise the name of the lord thank you thank you now all who are here and in the overflows just standing by your screen and those who are following from your homes your offices following from whatever tv station i want you to just um while they are lifting their hands you would lift or stretch your hands also as an act of faith i salute every one of you for coming it is honorable to come to jesus god bless you as you're still coming please join them very quickly please lift your right hand high above your head and say this after me mean it from the depth of your heart it's not a poem it's a declaration of faith that has spiritual implications say lord jesus tonight i have heard your word i believe that you are the son of god i believe that you died for me i believe that you rose again for my justification i declare from tonight and forever jesus is my savior my lord and my king i receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and i declare that i reign in life i am a child of god i go forward ever and backward never in jesus name please keep your hands lifted father we thank you for these ones you have brought them to yourself may the grace that keeps may that grace keep them in the name of jesus by the authority of scripture i declare your sins forgiven i declare that the lord grants you a new beginning the power of sin satan hell and the grave are broken over your life i commend you to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the holy spirit by this i pray that you'll be established in the faith and even in righteousness in jesus name i pray amen and amen god bless you very carefully i want you to follow the counselors they are waving the placard please take note of the crane so that you don't enjoy yourself let's celebrate them as they go you will meet the counselors very briefly they'll have a word with you and you'll be back are you celebrating them thanks for watching revival time hub but be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass, for he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was.